Hello, and welcome back to the Scary Stories channel. Thank you for watching our narrated scary true stories from Reddit. We have two scary stories for you tonight, so without further ado, let's begin. I had the supervisor, Kate. One day we had a discussion that turned into the paranormal. She told me about something that happened when she was a teenager. She always tries to debunk crazy things that have happened, but this one she hasn't been able to explain. It was the summer after she graduated from high school, sometime in the late 90s. She was 18 at the time. Her friend Billy was a few years older, but still lived with his mom in their house. This was a small city in western Maryland. Billy's house had just enough land that he could throw raging day-to-night summer parties, complete with bonfires. At the same time, they weren't totally isolated, and random people from the surrounding neighborhoods would show up to his parties all the time. One day, Billy met this skater kid named Nick at a park one morning. Being a social butterfly, Billy invited him to hang out at his house. Billy probably also took some pity on Nick because Nick told him he was a runaway who lived at the park. They would play video games, go on rides, and party till late at night. Nick started showing up every day at Billy's house. He would knock on the door at 7 a.m. sharp, engaging him in morning till night drinking. He was about 16 with dark eyes and dark spiky hair. He seemed fairly normal except for a couple of things. The first was that he always wore the same thing, a plain t-shirt and a pair of camo print cargo shorts. Despite the fact that he was sleeping at the park, his clothes always looked clean. The second is that he was never seen eating, nor going to the bathroom, despite the fact that Nick was drinking heavily with Billy. Finally, no one remembers actually feeling Nick's skin including my supervisor, who actually sat next to him in a car during a road trip. She hung out with Billy and Nick at Billy's house a couple of times. Each time, she and her friend felt like there was something off with Nick, especially when he would give off this laugh that just sounded very evil and crazy. He also seemed to get even stranger when they went on a road trip and got further away from Billy City. Nick would also never shut up about his father's gun collection. Finally, Billy's hospitality reached its limits. After two weeks of waking Billy up at 7 a.m. to go party, Billy snapped at Nick. He said, Look, Nick, you've been coming here every morning for two weeks. You're waking up my mother who is trying to sleep. You really need to go now. Please, just come back later. Then he slammed the door shut. Nick never showed up again. Billy came to Katie a little bit later with a newspaper article. It was about Nick, who had apparently killed himself. Nick had escaped from the mental asylum his parents had placed him in, got to his father's house, and shot himself with his father's gun. Billy was originally upset because he felt like he must have put Nick over the edge when he kicked him out, until he checked the dates. Nick had committed suicide on July 10th. This was two weeks before they had even met. Our second story tonight is entitled The Night Watchman. I will admit first off that I've heard a lot of these deep web, dark web stories and have always called BS. However, a close friend of mine swore that she had been to this place and had seen some really messed up things. Some she would talk about others she refused. She said some of the things that she had seen would haunt her for the rest of her life. I should have just let it go at that, but I wanted to believe that she was making it all up, that there was no such place, but I was the one that was wrong. You know the drill by now. I downloaded Tor Onion and found the hidden wiki. I had been warned about some of the links and how they can trick you into some really crazy and horrible things. I clicked a few. They were mostly escort requests, drug deals, etc. Needless to say, I was really starting to think I was right and that the deep web was just an easy way to make shady deals that couldn't be traced. It was lame, tame, and a little bit boring. 
I looked around for something remotely interesting. Then, I found the link, The Night Watchman. Okay, this could be interesting. I was thinking it might be some guy telling creepy stories or walking around a sleepy town at night or something like that. What greeted me was a flat black page with three videos blown up covering the space sitting side by side in a line. They were paused, and on each of them was a picture of different people. The first one had a family of four, mom, dad, and two little girls. The second was a couple. The female was obviously pregnant. The third was just one woman and her dog, a cute black lab with a white streak over his left eye. Before I could study them for too long, a voice came through. It was male but slightly distorted so I couldn't really hear what he actually sounded like. Here's what he said. Good evening. Tonight the night watchmen have brought you three unique households. Each of them lives different lives, believes different things, and have different future plans. He stopped here and cleared his throat. For this next part, it sounded like he was smiling. Watch each video and then choose one. I really didn't understand the point of this task, but honestly, now my interest was piqued. I was curious about where this was going. I clicked the first video. There wasn't too much to it. It showed the family in their home, skipping through moments of them watching TV, playing in the backyard, having supper, and going to bed. It cut off there. I reluctantly clicked the next video. I was transported into the home of a young couple getting ready to start a family. It skipped through to them in the baby's nursery. They were hugging and generally looked excited. They ate salads at the kitchen table, went through the mail, looked through the baby books and magazines, watched a show on TV, and then went to bed snuggling up together. This one was so sweet I couldn't help but smile at what I had seen. However, I was starting to feel like a voyeur in their personal moments. I had gone through the others. I figured it was only right to watch the last one. This one was of a single woman living with just her dog. She was a bit of a slob. She had dishes piled up, laundry on a love seat in the living room, and trash was overflowing. The other two families I had seen were pretty tidy. I wondered if there was a point to that since it did show these aspects in the other videos. Anyway, this woman seemed lonely. She watched a lot of TV, ate a half a gallon of ice cream, checked her cell phone every few moments, obviously hoping for a call or a text, played fetch with her dog, fed him, and then went to bed. She took her phone with her. I waited to see what was next. The videos reset and went back to the stills of each one again. The voice came back over and said, Now that you've seen, which one will you choose? I sat there and watched, praying that someone else was here watching this too. Hopefully, they would choose. But nothing happened for a few minutes. The video disappeared, and another three videos began playing simultaneously. These turned my stomach. There were three tall men. At least I assumed they were by what character I could catch. They each wore the same clothing. Black shirt, black pants, boots, and a long black trench coat that dangled around their ankles. To top it all off, they each wore a large, wide-brimmed black hat. Have you decided? Which one will you choose? The voice chimed in over the obvious live feed. Death comes on swift wings for our ill-fated friends. You must choose one. That is how the game goes. He thought this was a game? I was horrified. Was I really supposed to choose who died here and who survived? It was ridiculous, and I went to close down the page. Calmly, the voice began again. Before you close us down, you should know that if you do not choose one of the three shown here, your family will be next. I was startled by this declaration, but figured that he was just trying to scare me. It was working. Anna, he said. My heart skipped a beat. He said my name. Now I was officially terrified. I just wanted this to stop. Anna, dear sweet Anna, I know it's a difficult choice, 
but it must be made. Please, if you will, direct the night watchman to their chore. The original videos came back up and I knew that meant it was time for me to pick someone to die. Maybe it is just a horrible joke that some hacker and his friends like to play on unsuspecting deep web servers, I stated out loud. It was more to make me feel better than anything, even though my heart was still pounding. I looked at the people again. There were a family there. Children. I couldn't choose them. Then there was the expecting couple. I couldn't do this. It was too much. Choose. The normally calm voice barked at me now. Choose now. I jumped and looked at the last one. It was the lonely woman with a dog for a companion. She had the least to lose. She was alone. Without kids, without a husband. It wasn't okay, but I quickly clicked her video. Very well. So shall it be. The voice was calm and smooth once again. The videos of the night watchman came back up. Night watchman, a choice has been made. You may attend to your work. I watched in horror as two of the night watchmen began walking toward the houses in front of them, and the third one walked away from a house. I was confused. I chose the lonely woman, but her watchman was walking away. He disappeared into the night, and the feed cut out. The other two videos grew bigger and took up the whole screen. What's going on? What's going on was all I could say. The two watchmen that it showed each effortlessly broke into the houses. I was biting my bottom lips so hard that it bled. The feeds continued along with them as they each silently roamed through the houses. One watchman walked into the setup nursery and looked around gingerly. He then made his way across the hall to the other bedroom. The other watchman walked slowly down the hall, seemingly trying to decide which room to enter. He chose the children's room. I looked over to the first one. He stood at the foot of the sleeping couple's bed, holding a huge machete. He walked to one side and began swinging wildly. Their screams were so loud and disturbing that I felt like I might pass out or throw up. I reluctantly looked over to the other video. The watchman stood in the children's room, right in the center of the pink bunk bed. He also was sporting a machete. I screamed as he raised it up, reached over, and pulled the computer plug out of the wall. I was terrified, traumatized. What had I just witnessed? What had I just done? My mouth felt dry. My head was spinning out of control. My heart felt like it might burst out of my chest. After several hours, I decided to check my computer and hope the nightmare I had witnessed was gone. There was nothing. Days later, I was checking my email when I stopped and recoiled in horror. There was an email from the Night Watchman. I finally opened it. I really don't know why. Maybe I was hoping they would just tell me I had been punked or something. Instead, it was just a few large words on an otherwise white background. Jenna thanks you for excluding her from a Night Watchman's fate. We also thank you for your choices. We truly enjoyed our encounter with you. Come and play again anytime. Attached was a picture of a lonely woman walking her dog in the park, still looking down at her phone. I will never, ever access the deep web again. Do you think you will ever be faced with decisions that affect other people's lives? Maybe in some small way you already have. What gives us the power to decide the fate of another human being? These are all good questions to ponder as you are going to sleep tonight. So as always, good night, sleep tight from the Scary Stories Channel.